and all these other things take over in the modern church, but nothing will substitute the power of the Word of God. This church is based on the Word of God. Look at your neighbor and say, the Word has power. It truly does. And we have to get back to the essence of the word. It's something my pastor always re reminds me. Make sure that you give them the word. Because when all this other stuff passes away, the word will never come back void, right? Right? The word will always be in your heart when it's planted in there. Amen? David said, I took the word and I hid it in the inner parts of my heart so that I would not sin against you. Right? All right. Revelations 2 and 26. And this is from the King James Version. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works, keepeth my works, unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. And I want to read you, um, I want to read you uh, the message, what the message says. The one that wins and keeps God's work to the end, Say it back to me, to the end. Some of us are wondering why we don't have no power, but you didn't keep the word of God to the what? To the end. Then he says, to them I will give authority unto the nations, or I will give power. Amen? There is nothing worse than a powerless Christian. Nothing worse. Now, power, what do you mean? Like healing power and... And, and, and all the stuff that we see on TV and the stuff that, that some of the miracles, that, that's, that, that is miracles and that's gifts of the Spirit. But I'm talking about authority that everybody can have once you declare, I am a child of God. I'm not talking about gifts. I'm talking about authority. I'm talking about true power that the Word of God can give you. Amen? So he that wins... So if you want to win, you've got to keep God's Word and all the way to the what? Look at your neighbor and say, hold on. It gets tough, don't it? Okay, come and talk to me today so I can let y'all go early. Um, it, it gets tough, don't it? Keeping God's Word. Amen? Here's how you need to check, catch Revelation. Who wants to stay in a blessed place? See, if you, if you have been in that blessed place, and some of y'all have experienced that blessed place, if you're in that blessed place, then it's really not that hard anymore to stay in his word. It becomes a lifestyle. Because oh, I like this blessed place. I like everything that I touch be, be blessed. I like that my children can be healed. I like that my finances, God, you're already taking, taking care of it. I like increase. Who doesn't like increase? Okay, so basically what we're going to talk about today in this series is the power of the Word of God, but we have to win through the Word. Look at your neighbor and say, winning. winning. Are you? Are you winning? Hashtag winning if you think you are. If not, you will at the end of this message. Winning. So, again, the one that conquers or wins, you with me, and keeps God's work to the end, to him I'll give authority to the nations. See, God is no respecter of a person if you're obedient, right? Haters don't want you to win because they see the outside of you and they see your resume, but God says, all I need you to do to win is keep my works. No. No. You don't win by preaching every Sunday, Pastor? Mm -mm. You win when the Word has been taken to the inner parts of your life and the inner parts of your heart, and you apply it. Look at the last issue that you had. Just in your mind. Was it contrary to the Word of God? Um, yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> right, anything that's not of God is contrary to it. Think about it. We got to stop rationalizing why, uh, uh, okay, why my baby daddy tripping? Why my baby mama tripping? Why, 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 uh, okay, well, first of all, you're not married. Oh, okay, uh, all right, okay. But we rationalize that, don't we? Why can't I get them on the same page in a relationship? Because it's not meant to be that way. You know God, and the Word tells us specifically about fornication. The Word tells us specifically about cohabitation outside of marriage. A losing team has a whole different mentality, don't they? A whole different work ethic, a whole different 
uh, when, or if you're on a team on your job and they're not, they're not being productive, and when you really analyze what's going on, or if, you have, if you're on a losing basketball team and you really analyze what's going on, chances are they're not doing exactly what they were told to do, are they? Right? You can't win if you don't listen. You can't win if you don't take it in and follow through. It's impossible. That means your whole culture is a losing culture, and you created a whole mentality of losing. So if you do not follow the word, and, you, and some folk just, some folk need to call it like it is. You're losing because you're stubborn. You're losing because God has already shown you the right way, and yet you want to be disobedient. You refuse to work on your left hand layup. You refuse to work on your back hamstring. You refuse to work on your jump shot. You refuse to work extra on your, on your analysis at work. Well, that, guess what? You can't win unless you put in the extra stuff. You can't win unless you change your whole mentality from losing. Have you noticed losing people always got excuses? Ooh. Have you noticed that? That when you're on a losing team, I played for winning teams and I played on losing teams, and the losing team never owned anything. Well, the reason why we lose is because of coach. If my boss wasn't so mean, I wouldn't be, I would be, I would be able to handle it. What does your boss have to do with your work ethic? God Almighty, I'm preaching to somebody. Oh, oh, you got to change your mentality to be on the winning team. So listen, if, let, let, let's explain this. Let me explain this a little bit more. Are y'all with me? Because it's, it's clearly he that overcometh and keepeth my works, or he that wins and keepeth my works. You got to understand, you got to get your mind out of this losing mentality and get your mind in the Word. Stop making excuses for everything. That's a losing mentality. Have you noticed nobody really values? When you look at a losing team, nobody really values them, do they? Have you noticed that if you're on a losing team and you display a losing mentality, nobody wants to hear you? Oh, I'm talking to somebody. And we, and we politely ignore you. As Christians, we can't talk junk to you, but I better, you better believe it. We're politely ignoring you. I cannot receive nothing that comes out of their mouth. But then losers make, losers make excuses why nobody's listening to them. Oh, God, I'm preaching. Uh, losers make excuses why, why nobody's listening to them. Because if you're winning, the fruits will show. This is the only way we can grow. We cannot be a church that does not understand correction. We cannot be a church that doesn't understand the word. We cannot be a church. I'm not going to walk on eggshells when I correct you. I'm going to correct you just like my pastor corrects me, and we're going to be just as anointed as I'm anointed. We're going to be just as anointed as my pastor's church is anointed, and we're going to be just as blessed because we did the hard stuff. We removed the losing mentality, and we got on the winner's team. That means you went on your job, you went on your home, you went in your relationships. You have to keep God's word to the very end in the inner parts of your heart and trust God. Not some of the time, but... So you got to understand, you got to come out of this losing mentality and trust God's plan for your life in closing. And trust God's plan for your what? <laughs>